And we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we are going to be looking at the New York Knicks and their free agency possibilities because, you know, they were this close to making it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. They were this close to... (sighs) to bringing some joy to New York. They were this close from all of this and that, and it's just, ah, it's it's unfortunate the way that it ended. But the Knicks are still trying to improve. Obviously, a team that is really, you know, a few inches closer to making it all the way to the finals is going to make a few more steps to try and... Uh, push their team all the way and the GM on the Knicks obviously is going to be trying to do his best to see like what other players he could possibly get so we have some we have an article coming in like you know talking about the potential and grabbing certain players for free agency that would be a pretty good fit for the New York Knicks so looking at this report the first name on the list is friggin ball Paul George so (laughs) I'm not entirely sure if Paul George is going to want to go to the Knicks on that big market. I think he's more like he seems more inclined to want to join Philly and the 76ers as opposed to joining the Knicks. But looking judging by this report, he would be an ideal fit for the Knicks, but it won't be easy to acquire him if he fails to reach a long term deal with the Clippers, which um. Fred Katz writes um, of The Athletic writes about and he's 34 years old and obviously like and expected to sign a max extension if the Clippers are willing to give it to him. I wouldn't expect him to settle for anything less if and if the Clippers don't give him that max extension that he wants, then I totally see him leaving the team and deciding to um and deciding to try and find a different location to call home maybe to a team that is going to pay him all that money because like i mean he's expected to make um he's eligible for a 221 four year million a 221 million dollar extension for four years there we go that's better english and he is also he also has a player option he forward he has a 48.8 million dollar player option for next season that must be picked up by June 29th but again you know it's that really really big contract that he's going to be looking for and that huge extension deal that he's eligible for now um George's three point shooting his pick and roll skills and constant movement would help him blend seamlessly with the rest of the New York Knicks roster according to Katz, and adds that George and OG would become the best pair of perimeter defenders in the league because, you know, one thing about Paul George that is, you know, one thing that is constant about Paul George aside from his offense is his really good and reluctant defense. He's known as, like, for his two-way, um, he's known for his, you know, two-way tenacity, I guess you could say, and just being a very good um ball handler being a very good shooter being a very good defender as well like there's almost every facet of his game is um is arguably considered elite and like again they would they would be a pretty good tandem of perimeter defenders now Katz points out that George has a history of playing alongside other stars and he's a client of CAA which was formerly run by Knicks president Leon Rose Now, New York won't have cap space to sign Paul George if he opts out, and the Clippers wouldn't be permitted to sign and trade him because they're above the second apron. So the Knicks would need George to opt in to make a deal possible, and Katz is skeptical that LA would be in a hurry to move him if he's under contract for another season. Sources tell Katz that the Knicks have considered George in the past, but they had never made a serious offer to acquire him that could change if he and the Clippers agree that picking up the option and being traded this summer is the best course of action. At least, 
you know, according to this article. Sources also tell Katz that the Knicks um, also have a desire to add Donovan Mitchell into the lineup, which is, you know, it's going to be very interesting. But as you know, the, there have been reports recently about Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs, you know, they were in talks of signing an extension, and it seems like the Knicks are going to, um, the Knicks are going to follow up on that. Um, well, they are, they aren't going to follow. Uh, they aren't going to follow up on the Cavs and that offer. Like, that's what I meant to say. I just, I completely. That's my bad. So the Knicks, they're only going to offer him if he doesn't sign that extension. If he does end up signing that extension, they're not going to try and counter that with anything. And it's not like they won't lose sleep over it. They'll just go, they'll be like, all right, on to the next. But it doesn't seem like he's not going to be a huge, like a huge target that like if they don't land, then everything is just messed up. And if that makes, if that makes sense. So hold on just one second. I'm just looking at more, uh, more articles that, um, let me see. So next is um so aside from getting donovan mitchell like um despite the like they were they had they were in talks of getting donovan before the uh what's it called like before jalen brunson sort of became good so now that he's like as good as the hype sort of um entails behind him there's like there seems to be a little bit of less of a need from the Knicks front office to get another guard and like um you know at least a, a scoring guard so you know Macal Bridges, Carl Anthony Towns, um well Macal Bridges, Dejounte Murray, and Demar Derozan that's my bad like they could be potential additions but it's like you know they don't they aren't that how do I put this? I mean, I wouldn't really consider McCall a good primary scorer, especially not after this previous season with Brooklyn. DeJounte, um, he was mainly, you know, with the with the Hawks, he was a second option as um a scorer. And then with DeMar, he was he's the first op but I mean you could argue that he's the first option, but you also could argue that he's a second option behind Zach Levine in being a scoring option. So, but aside from that, you know, it's Mikal Bridges, Carl Anthony Towns, and DeJounte and DeMar that are, that could be potential additions for this um, New York Knicks team, which would be, honestly, I think out of all of those players, I think Mikal is the best fit, but I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the next segment as opposed to this one, because it does sort of overlap into the next segment that I have planned out. So... Cats um Cats cites it also noted that um the Nets have been offered multiple first round picks for Bridges but they continue to view him as um okay I'm I'll talk a little bit about that in the next segment we're getting a little bit too close to exactly what the se the fourth segment is going to be about so after the um after the Knicks' playoff run ended, members of the Knicks organization expressed confidence about their chances of re-signing both Ananobi and Isaiah Hartenstein because, you know, since they were winning, it only makes sense that they want to sign these extensions. Now, OG might be a little bit tougher to please because he did have a really good season, so I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to ask for a little bit more money than he has made in the previous year. But there's also that um there's also some reports that um the team expects competition for both players and they could be outbid for um Isaiah Hartenstein because league rules limit their offer to about 16 million per um for next season and a 72.5 million over 4 years so this is a this is like you know according to the report and they also he also examined the um the draft and see if it offers any clues about what the Knicks might do with um, the picks 24 and 25 this year. We still have no idea exactly what New York plans on doing with those picks. And if they're going to, um, as I like to say, mess up the draft yet again. They have a really, they have a good history of messing up a bunch of draft picks. I mean, you guys know 
and what the remember the infamous Tingus Pingus meme. Tingus Pingus Kristaps Porzingis. He was, you know, drafted by the New York Knicks. And when he was drafted, everybody was upset. All the Knicks fans were completely upset. They had no idea who Kristaps Porzingis was. And somebody who made a video on that, he was like, Who is this? Who is Tingus Pingus? And the, he, he was, um, he, that's obviously, you know, Chris Stapps' nickname. It's been his nickname for a while. And he ended up, you know, he ended up being not so, like, you know, at the start he wasn't popular, but he ended up being a really good option. But then they decided to get rid of him, and now he is on Boston. But, I mean, the Knicks, with their, with their draft picks, whatever can go wrong, it, it will go wrong. And we'll see what they do with their, um, with their picks in the draft. But... With that out of the way, we can. Th- that's the end of the third segment. So now we will go ahead and go into the fourth segment where we talk a little bit about Macau Bridges and his uh, future with the Brooklyn Nets because, you know, it seems like he's going to have a long one with them. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows available everywhere podcasts are found. 